welcome to the flutter festivals another session of flutter festivals as you guys already know that flutter festivals is a community led event series where uh, developers can join to learn the fundamentals of google technologies featuring uh, flutter firebase google cloud uh, and all uh, in this session we have an ex we have an expert of flutter uh, renuka kilkar ma'am uh, she is also a flutter gd a uh, google developer expert uh, in london uk also she is a founder of uh, tech power girls uh, in this session you will get to learn how to build um, how to build an app with a flutter uh, and we have planned a lot of activities opportunities to elevate your career using flutter through the expert session so uh, let's get started uh, give your best and uh, and ma'am will be guiding you through the hands on session and uh, make the best use of it so over to you ma'am thank you so welcome everyone thanks for joining this session uh, uh, let me share my screen uh, first so are you able to see my screen yeah ma'am it's visible yeah okay. yes ma'am yeah okay. so uh, so i think last time i already introduced myself but if there is some new uh, new students joins today's session so let me introduce myself uh, i am a renuka kelka i am a google developer expert for flutter uh, i am based in london i work uh, as a flutter developer at alta flora uh, is a uh, and uh, i am i have i'm a founder of the tech power girls community where we train or empower the women with the help of uh, flutter app development and our this initiative we expand in this initiative to help the students from the india uh, to learn the flutter app development so this is a little about me so uh, so today uh, we are creating a last time we have seen that that how to uh, what are the basic widgets in flutter how we can use that widgets and create a beautiful ui so we will explore more widgets today uh, and then we will see how you can create a multi page app in flutter uh, there are some more concept you can learn today how to do the navigation uh, some kind of animation as well so let's let's will see so first the element covered in the today's session is like a, what is a stack what is a list view grid view then uh, last time we have just seen the one page app right so this this time we are thinking of to creating a multi page app then how to create a data so like a creating a like a uh, dynamic app so flowing the data dynamically uh, then uh, there are some concept like uh, how to make uh, container like a circular shape or how to change the shape of image so these kind of things we can also see so it it gives you like a more uh, more kind of ui centric designs basically then we can talk about the animation which is very basic if you use that you will get a good kind of uh, transition effect in your app so these are the things i am going to cover today's session uh, so i will just go through the my slides and uh, i will talk more about that um when i will do the live coding so first thing is stack so uh, last time we have seen uh, about the how you can structure your app like uh, if you want to have uh, like uh, all the your all your content is is vertically aligned then you should use the column if you want to align your elements in the app horizontally then you can use the row but what about if i want to overlap the things like uh, sometimes uh, i want some images and on that image i want to put some text so these kind of effects we want in our app right so what what which widget is useful for to do this so the stack is the widget which you can use to overlapping the things like uh, you can overlap multiple widget uh, in that so it's a very handy widget so next thing is list view so uh, in flutter if you want to uh, like a kind of uh, want to list of something 
then you can use the list view like a uh, you if you have a background of web development then you can use a like a in a in a web development you use a ui tag right so where you can create a list of the element so it is a similar way you can use to create a list of uh, widgets inside the app but what exactly we get benefit from the list view is that it will give the scrolling effect so uh, in a column you can use you can uh, put the as many as element in that uh, widget but column doesn't give you the facility to have like a scrolling effect so column always uh, take the uh, area of the screen which is already visible okay but in list view you can create a list of atoms as many you want and you can give the scrolling effect you will get if it default as a scroll effect and you can scroll the page so that is the list view so list view also have many different uh, options as well so we will see like a how you can create a dynamic list like a uh, if you know the how many atoms are there in your list then you can use a list view but if you want like a let's say i am creating a some some app well, like a contact app okay so i know there are four contacts in my list then i can create a list view but i don't know if in future i would like to add more contacts in my contact list so that time you need to have kind of like a uh, somewhere the data is in some other place and whenever you change that data it will uh, it will show that in your ui so that time you can need to have something dynamically so that time the list view dot builder come in the picture so i will go through that as well uh, while i'm coding so the next thing is that you normally see in this kind of uh, structure many people are using in their app so how you can uh, how you can create this kind of thing so it is a similar uh, just like a list view you can use a, use as a grid view so you just need to give the uh, amount of what grid you want like a 2 by 2 3 by 2 this is kind of things you can uh, explicitly mention there and you can create a this kind of effect so there are many options uh, available uh, in a grid view as well same as the list view builder grid there is a grid view builder as well there so you can create a grid view uh, around the dynamically as well so these are the two concept we will going to use in our today's app then uh, how to create a models i think you all are the engineering student i don't need to explain a lot in this in that sense you know the what is a classes and objects and all this stuff but how you can create that in flutter that i am going to show you how to create a nested models and how to retrieve that data inside your uh, inside your app that we are going to demonstrate today so the next step uh, how to fetch that data that is also i am going to show you uh then next thing uh basically how you can see here i have uh, i have uh, created a image with the circular uh, corners so how you can do there are many ways you can uh, make the changes in the code or you can use the different ways to do this so the, there is a widget called the clipper widget so you clip the image kind of thing so this is the there are many types as well but we are going to uh, use the simple type uh, clip art rect today for our uh, pro today's workshop so we will demonstrate that as well so next thing is hero animation so right now you can't uh, uh, you can't see any transition here but when when i while drive i uh, when i uh, develop that then you can see the what is the actual transition of this thing so these are the some points i am going to cover in this today's topic so i think let me share my android studio uh, so let me show you the output as well so this is the output i have created okay we are going to create this and if you can see there is a some transition so that is called the like a hero animation so you can see it's not normal changing the page but it is showing some transition so that is kind of thing uh just I, i i just told you that about the nested thing so you can see that if i click on the london it will give the uh, attraction related to the london and hotels related to london so how you can build such kind of ui so that is we can going to create today okay so let me share uh i will create a new document new flutter project 
So let's see. Travel. So what I will do, I will just uh, delete some code from here. And I will just remove this as well. So last time what we have done, we have created a home class here itself. But today I am going, I am not going to create the same class in the same, same page. What I will create, I will create some folder structure as well. So in this is our main.art file. In that file, I'm going to create one folder. So you can say as a view, uh, you can say as a screens, you can uh, say as a pages. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Sorry for interrupting you, but uh, your Android studio is not visible and uh, screen is stuck in that Canva page. Oh, really? Oh, OK, just a minute. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Uh, so. Maybe you shared you've shared uh, not entire screen maybe uh okay the, let me stop sharing and again let me share yeah, it okay. again maybe that mm. okay now can you see yeah now it's no. okay that Thank thanks you. for letting me know otherwise i will just start uh, talking and i don't yeah, know what's going on okay so, uh, so I'm creating a new folder here uh, in a lib file. Uh, you can create uh, whatever name you like it, but normally uh, so people are using like a MVP architecture. So, uh, so you can create a controllers, you can create views and models, all this stuff. So I can name it like a let's say views. So view, then I will create a one folder for the model as well. OK, so in that view, I will I'm going to create, let's say home page. Uh, or you can let's see. So in this home page, I'm creating uh, like a first import the material dot dot. And I'm creating a uh, stateless widget first. So this is my home page and what I am going to do, I am just import that file inside the main part. So this is this is a really good practice to uh, just divide your code in different different pages, like a different different widgets are in a separate file. So you can uh, easily read your code as well. And if you want to do any changes, you can directly go in that page. So this is our page. So first thing first, what what is a, a first element in our uh, widget tree uh, after the material dot uh, material app is like a scaffold. So here is a scaffold. So scaffold has a property of app bar. I'm going to use the app bar here. I'm going to use the title and the title will lead a text. Text widget. Which will give you the travel app okay so let me run this first then we will move so are you able to see my emulator as well uh, simulator yes ma'am okay so what i will do i will just uh, smaller the screen just So it will be like a side by side. What happened?
Uh, Ma'am, one of the participant is asking to repeat this uh, linking file section uh, in the chat box. OK, yeah, OK. So what I have created, I haven't I haven't linked anything yet. I have, what I have done, I have just created a folder and in that folder I have created a file. OK, so in that file I have just written the main whatever uh, we want to create a widget. I have just need to do that. So I have just created a separate file with the stateless widget. OK, and you just need to go here and call that class. It's it's a class name. It's not a page name. You can see here and I'm, I'm not calling the home page uh, file. I'm calling the home class, which is which you can going to see here. Here is the class name, right? So you are going to call that class inside the main dot dot file. So now normally uh, so it is an import. We are importing that file inside the uh, main dot dot file. Let me know why it's not coming. Oh, just a minute. I will just start again. Maybe simulator. work. So while waiting for this, let me create a, a more files for this uh, in view folder. Let's say. I will create a new file. Uh, let's say CT page. OK, then OK, it's coming. OK, so first thing uh, the our home page. Uh, happened? Why it's giving me so much trouble today? Sorry about this technical glitch. What happened? Okay, now so. So right now we are in a home page. OK, so what I want to do, I will sh uh, in our if I go to my design. So if I go through this design. And if I zoom in this, so first thing is that we don't have a app bar. In my screen, so last time someone asked me, can we create our own scaffold? So you don't need to use all the element from that scaffold. If you want to create, customize your design, you can do it. So right now you are seeing here there is no any app bar here. And you can see I have called one image and on that image, I, on that, that image I am going to write down the text. So for that, what I am going to do after the app bar, let me delete this app bar as well. I will just delete this. OK, and I will just call the body. OK, and in the body because uh, my whole structure is getting vertically aligned, so I'm going to call the column. OK. So in the column, I'm going to call the children. And my first element in my children, let's say I will create a one container first because uh, because I, I want to have like a separate 
top portion and the below portion is separate out. So let me create use the container first. OK, and in that container what I'm going to create, I will have like a child and in that child I will have a stack. OK, so in that stack stack it is a similar like a column and the row it is like a multiple child widget. So it's having a child. image so I am going to call image dot network and will give the path so I think I open that image somewhere okay so I'm copying this image address and I'm going here and I'm pasting here this thing so let's see what is the output for this so you can see here so uh this is the design I want. I don't want a uh, app bar. So after that, what I want, I want text. So let me show you the effect of the stack first and then I will create the uh, text. So if I put the any container here again. OK, so see what is happening. So stack is like a, the kids play with the stack kind of uh, toys, right? Whatever first uh, you put some ring inside that. So first ring inside that uh, stack, it will go at the bottom. The, it is a similar way. Whatever is the first element in your stack, it will go at as a background. So you can see here the what I have put it the second element after uh, the image. So that element will is the top of the image. If I put uh, some more elements. If I just copy this and. So if. So you can see the red red portion is on the top of the blue portion and the uh, and the image is at the bottom. So first element always go as a as a background or as a go down and the whatever element you are inserting in the stack it will go on the top of that. So this is the concept of the stack first. So now I want I don't want this con uh, this uh, containers I will just have like a text. So let's uh, have the text we checked. So what I have done, I have done some already code snippets with me. So that's why I will just copy pasting. It's better for me to do the more stuff. So what I will do, I just copy the text tool. It will save our time. OK, so let's see what is happening here. So it is going very above, right? So there is two way you can do uh, like a, if you want, you can uh, put as a wrap with the center or you can wrap with the padding tool. So if I wrap with the padding tool, uh, you can see it's all. But if I just want have more padding on the top side, so I will what I will do, I will just go to here only. And here is a top. Let's say 30. Let's say more. Let's say 60. Yes, so you can see I want little bit padding on the left hand side as well. So left padding, let's say 20. So this text is going here. So what is the next thing? Uh, if I add more text, uh, basically I can add more text from here as well. So here is a text. Because text part we have covered last time. That's why I'm not going to uh, sh uh, show you the all the stuff again. 
but if anyone wants to like uh, know more about that uh, just let me know otherwise i will just uh, so here as well we need to add a padding and i will copy this So here we need like a let's say D. I want more. Okay. So now you understand what is the concept of the stack uh, and how you can uh, make changes in your UI using the stack. So this is a we are going to use a stack. So next element, if you can see on the screen. So here is the uh, here is we need like a grid. So how we can going to use it? So let's do one thing. I I will do I will just go here and collapse thing. Okay. So next thing is my grid. So I am going to use the grid view. dot builder because i want to create the whole thing dynamically so that's why what i will do i will use the grid view i will show you the list view builder as well so you will get more idea in that sense as well so in a grid view what will happen we are going to use uh, sleevers child delegate with the fixed count so i want like a 2 by 2 grid so sliver grid delegate with the like fixed cross count it will give me that uh, ability to we can fix the how much count you want for your grid so here is a property of uh, cross count is 2 i am going to give 2 and i will so what it will happen here in this atom builder so it is just like a for loop okay so this builder property what it will build it will uh, iterate the uh, the whole thing how many times if you have given the length of that grid so i will just show you so here is it will take the context comma index and here we are creating this function and we are returning let's say i am i will return a container Okay, and I will have a, like a let's say height three hundred width three hundred and color okay. And so it is having one property called atom count. so how many atoms you want to show in that grid you can show that so here i have created everything okay and we'll see the output is output is coming or not it should come but let's see what is the problem so there is no, there is you can't see anything yet so what is the problem so many times this situation happens and you can't see anything on the screen you just see the email uh, in the top portion of the container but you can't see anything for the grid view so what is happening the column is a widget which will have bounded height like a column always take the whatever height or whatever screen size is there it will build that much and in that we are using a grid view which will have unlimited height like a you can have unlimited element inside the grid view or list view builder so that conflicts each other so you need to give that grid view as a shrink property and it will uh, keep keep it as a true which will help you to uh, render that object basically so here you can see so now the next problem arises here is you can see there is a yellow colors bars like here right so it means it is showing that because i have put it like a 
atom counts if i put like a uh, let's say four so that error is gone so why this happened so first thing what i will do i will just uh, uh, i will just give the padding to this widget so you can see the grid uh it is a padding widget this which the padding okay and here in the padding we need aging six dot all let's say ten okay let me show you that so you can see the grid 2 by 2 grid and you can see the four element so atom count is four so it shows the four element so if i increase this so it will show me the error of the, the there is a there is a not that big space at the bottom because this grid view have their own uh, uh, own uh, scrolling effect but this this container uh, this because we are wrapping inside the column and column doesn't have that much height that's why it is showing this area so what you can do you can wrap this column with the single child scroll view so if we wrap with this it is a similar uh, like a list view list we also give the ability to have a scrolling effect and single child scroll view also have the same effect but it's only have one child so it's have and you can see the error is gone now the next next problem is what i will show you so right now i have only one grid view here but i want to scroll the whole page i don't want to scroll the just below portion that how i can do that so i have to just one because we the whole page also have the scrolling effect and the grid view also have the scrolling effect so how we can manage only have one so what you can do you can go here uh, in a grid view and you can say physics and you say that i already have a, a single child scroll view as a my parent thing and i don't want to scroll uh, scrolling thing in together so i will say that never scroll physics here so it means it will not scroll only for the grid view it will scroll only the single child scroll view so if you can see now there is no separate uh, scrolling for this widget it will just scroll the whole thing so i hope you can understand the concept of this so the what is the next if you have any question related to this concept please put it in the chat maybe uh, the organizer can uh, show me the what if they have any question because this is a very important concept uh, while developing the app and many places you will uh, get such kind of error that's why i have shown you what kind of error you can face and how you can solve that error basically okay so now uh, i don't uh, want ma'am there yeah. are few questions in the chat box yeah uh, ma'am avaz is asking that uh, can you explain the text widget on time and uh, one is asking can we do dynamic apps yeah this is the how we are going to create now it's a dynamic app only okay so i just creating a ui first now then we will create a data and then we will call that data dynamically through the uh, pages like a, through the our app basically so i will just show you uh, i will explain the text when i when i writing the text inside the uh, in, in this container as well so i can explain that as well okay so just you can understand this concept grid view how you can create a, a grid view dot builder what are the meaning of the physics property or atom count or atom builder so this is the thing now i want images okay 
so if i call the same image let's say uh, if I, I i call the same image let's see okay instead of color and all this stuff uh, what i will do i will just call the child uh then few participants are uh, requesting to explain the grid view again okay i will do that yeah just a minute i will just uh, add the image dot network and i will just put this image okay so you can see this image is coming here right and you can see the because i am using only one element and i am doing a hard coded value here that's why the, all the places you are using you have you can see the one image only right as i as i mentioned that the if you want to create a dynamic uh, data dynamic app then you need to use the builder like a grid view builder if you are just showing the three or four elements inside your app you don't need that then you can just use the grid view only. You don't need to put anything. So let me show you one more thing like a list view as well. So you will uh, get to idea what is a thing in that. So right now you have seen the builder. So I will just show you the grid view and grid view or list view. So I will just uh, comment this code right now and I will explain you again. So let's say instead of this, what I will do, I will use the list view. Okay. So this is not dynamic. It's just like a getting a scrolling effect. That's it. So list view is a having the same kind of as a grid view. So it will have the children uh, inside the list view and you can call. Okay. So you can see there is a only again you can see you, you have the same problem as I mentioned. You cannot see the any uh, any any element from the list view. It will have the same problem just like a grid view. You need to shrink wrap it. And it said true. So there is you can use the uh, what is the expanded widget as well, but I am showing you there are many ways you can solve this issue basically. So you can see here if I go and copy. See you can have the list view with the there is no any dynamic thing happened. You have to hard code each and every every value. You have to repeat the same code again and again. So if I want to create a, any app which will have the like a 90, 100, more than 1000 of data I want to show. Are you going to create and are you going to hard code the same value each every time? No, that is not feasible, right? So that's time the how to create a data inside the app that come in the picture. So that's why I have shown here you can create uh, for the grid view. You are using the list uh, grid view dot builder and if you want to just show the some atoms which is scrolling that time you just use the list view. So these are the some uh, difference between the list view and list view builder or grid view or grid view builder. So these are the some points basically. So I think I hope you understand what I'm saying. Uh, it's the same concept for the grid view as well. So here what what we have done. Uh, yeah, so here what we have used we have a grid view. What will happen? So whatever value you are returning from this grid view dot builder, it will paint that value and uh, how many times atom counts you have given it it will iterate that for loop for, for you uh, that function uh, uh, builder function will do that for you basically so atom builder function is there 
So that function, what will it, it will iterate the value? How many times you have given the atom uh, atom counts basically? Uh, is that clear to you? Uh, is anyone have any other question related to this basically? No. So let me give some height and width. I will create a data, then you will understand more basically. So let's say 300 and width. Uh, let's say 300 width and I will create height should be like a 400. OK, and then you can say fit. Box fit. So you can see the all the image size will be the same. OK, so this is how you can create. Now the now we want to show the data dynamically. OK, so that time you have to I have created a model folder here. OK, so in this model folder, I have to going to create a model data class. Or let's say. So I'm going to create a data class here. So uh, the class then class name. So this is a, a normal representation how you can create a classes in Dart basically. So inside that uh, what I want to create, I want for this class what I want the image size or image. Uh, I want some name. Let me show this uh, design. So you, here you can see. The I have the city class in that city class. It will have the image. It will have the name of the city. Uh, let me show you here. So you can see I have created a city class in that city class. I have created a city name city image. Then in that country name uh, and in that I'm going to add list of places and list of the hotels. OK, so how we can do this basically? So first we are just uh, just we are uh, in the class. If let's say I'm creating a data class, I will create a type of the class uh, type of the variable. Let the string or uh, let's say name. And string. Uh, let's say image. OK, and then I will create a constructor for this. So I'm creating the uh, name constructor, so so it will you can access that value. It's image comma this dot name. So because now everything is in the null safety, so it will have the required parameter. So I will add the required parameter. OK, so this is how you can create a class. So do you know why we are creating this class? Because whatever data, if you are creating a data in API or you are using a data through Firebase, so that data connects with this model class. So the. Like a in a simple life example, if I want to create a uh, cookies, OK, and I want to create a cookies, let's say for Valentine's Day, I want to create a cookies for the hardship. So I have the cookie dough with me. I want each cookie should be have the same size and same structure. So I have to use the cookie cutter with the shape of the heart shape, right? So my all the cookie material goes through that. So it will uh, like a, it's like a blueprint kind of thing. So you for that you can create a model class. So you whatever data you have created in your database that will go through this model class. So uh, so that uh, you already mentioned the what is a type of data uh, if it is date for date if it is integer uh, if it is double so these are the thing you are going to mention in your model class and that through you can create your data so did you uh, all you have understand what is the concept of the model class and how you are going to create the data here is anyone have any question related to this? Hmm. 
because uh, what I have done, I have sake of the time. I have just created a, the class of, with me. I'm just using that. If you have any question related to that, then you can just ask me what I will do. I just copy the whole file of the places, uh, uh, then hotel and travel. I will just copy this file and I will explain you as well in my uh, code as well, maybe. Is anyone have any question related to this? Please ask me because this is a really core concept. If you don't understand it, you don't uh, understand how you can create the app as well for the how to fetch the data basically. Uh, Ma'am, few participants are asking to repeat the data. Okay, okay. I will just. Okay. So just uh, uh, so let's see. I have created a city class here. Okay. And in this city class, I have some properties like a city will have a name, city will have an image, city, which city, which country you are from. So city will have a country name. So these are the, just the declaration of the uh, properties. OK, so each city will have a type, uh, uh, have a, some property and which will have a type. So here you are mentioning the type. So because city name is a uh, like a text. So that's why I have mentioned as a uh, as a type as a string. OK, you can see the image, but image I am giving the path of the image and path is a string. So that's why I mentioned as a string for here. Same as a country name. The next thing is that the places. So places also have what will have in the places. It will have the list of the places uh, inside that city. So that's why I have given the type as a list. So normally uh, in other languages you are using the array, right? The same way you are using the uh, list inside the Dart basically. And I have created a separate class which is called the place. So I will show you what I have, uh, what I mentioned. So here you have created the data class image. This thing is uh, if I want to have some list of things like a uh, list of string OK. And which will have uh, let's say uh, places. OK, so I have to. OK, so you have to mention the type of the uh, variable you are creating basically. What is happening here? So I have created the class with the class name. I am putting the all the variable which I want to pass through. Uh, I have given the uh, the type of that variables. Here I want to add the list of the places. So what I will create, I will create a separate class for this uh, for the places as well. So you can see here I have created separate class for the place name, place image and description. You can see in a hotel as well. I have created a separate class hotel name, hotel image, hotel price, hotel address, hotel description. So these are the classes I have created and I will call these classes in inside my travel class. So like a city is my main class and in that class I'm calling the two different classes as well. The list of the places and list of the hotel. So the basically the cookie cutter uh, like a uh, basically if you say we have a wardrobe right and we know that uh, in my in my wardrobe uh, uh, where is the place where i can keep my clothes where is the place where i keep my accessories so so we have that structure so you have to give the structure to to your data that that time you are creating the classes you can directly if you are creating a app with the firebase you can create and directly connect to the Firebase as well. There is no problem. But what happened if I want to if I done something um, made some changes in my database? OK, if I change the name of any variable in my Firebase application. And and that you are calling all the variables in your code. So you need to change that 
that the, the name of that variable in so many pages. OK, so that time if you have already created a model class, so you are saying that whatever data I'm coming through my database, I'm going through this model class and I have given certain name to that. So I just need to change whatever uh, changes are in my database only in one file, only in this model file. You don't need to do any changes in any other files. So that's why uh, this model class is very handy to manipulate the data and give the structure to the, your data basically. So do you all understand what is the concept of this? We'll share more documents about this as well. There are many people have created a good tutorial on this as well. How to create a model class and it is I'm showing you creating you this small kind of uh, project where data is very small. But when you are creating a like a Firebase big application or API, the data in the API is really big. So that time you are not able to write by your own hands the all the model classes. So there is a there is a uh, uh, packages like a like a there is a facility. You will convert your JSON file to your Dart file, and you you will get the ready-made code of that, and you can just import that code inside your model class. So there are many ways in that. If you are interested, I will share some documents related to that as well, so you will learn more about this. But this is really basic when you want to create a multiple page app with the dynamic functionality. So is anyone have any question related to this? No. I think it's clear. So now what I will show you. So I have created a travel class like a city class. Inside that I have created this uh, the variables and then I have created a, some dummy data. So what I have done the list of city right and here I have creating the uh, list. This is a type and this is a city list. So inside city what is my object is a city right because we have mentioned here my object name is city right the class name. So so it will create uh, it will ask you to have like a city name city image uh, see a country name uh, city places. So let's say I will uh, I will create I will show you that as well. So uh, in a data class let me see how a uh, list of what is the type of uh, class is a data. And let's say list name is data list. OK, and uh, it is a. OK, and you can see here if I. Uh, see, so if you if I create a data, it will ask me because it's a required parameter we have given as a required, right? So it will ask me to will I have to fill this all the required parameter. So here what I will do because I have mentioned here it is a string. So it will ask me the string. So let's say I have I'm saying the ABC dot JPEG. So it will take that value. It's a key value pair, right? It's a key and it's a value. So here is a name. Let's say. London. OK. Let's say. Uh, so something like that. So you can create as many objects you want with the help of the same class. OK. So you can create something like that. So how many elements you want in that list? You can create normally this data comes from the database, but for to sake of just uh, to understand the concept and you are creating a small app, you can create data inside your app itself. So I think you have all understand this concept, right? How you can create the model class. So what I will do, I will just make comment the code and I will use this class. OK, 
so i have created a city list so now i want to fetch this city inside my code because in my code what i have done here in my code i have just hard coded this value that's why all the places you can see the same image i don't want that so how we can do this first thing is that i have given the atom count but i have created a model class now i don't need to give the hard coded value here so whatever you is your uh, list of the uh, element you just need to call that so i will go here in my page i will give that list what is the list we are going to use here for the data you just need to import that so whenever you see there is a red color bulb is coming right so click on that it will import uh, give the um, suggestions and you can just import that so now that is imported and if you click the dot it will give the length as well because it will understand ki this is a list and list will have a length okay so now you will get you are connecting your model class with your ui okay so now i want to fetch that so how we can do this so here instead of this image instead of this hard coded value what i will do i will just remove the hard coded value and because we have created a list here so what i will do cities because we are calling that data from that cities and in that cities index why it is not coming happen what happened let me create a one let's see Okay, so I have just created one variable, and here I am going to. Why it is not coming? It's very strange. What I missed?
I think let me copy the code from here. Maybe it works because it should work. I don't know why why it is not coming, showing me some errors. Uh, let me do that. Uh, Okay, it's why it's not coming. Okay, now it is coming here, but I don't know why it is not coming my previous code. So you can see the image. I will show you the code as well. I will just remove some code because you don't understand. Maybe I have put it some code. Uh, I will just remove that as well. So. Sorry, uh, from my side, there is some technical problem. I don't know what is happening. It will run again. Okay, so you can see here uh, what I have done. I will just uh, remove that as well. Maybe. So here is the output of what we have just fetches the all the images. So you can see here what I have done. I have just uh, I have select I have just connected with the list what we have created in a data class. So that data class list is uh, is mentioned in atom uh, atom count. So if you add like a hundred hundred uh, atoms in the city, you can add it in the, your data and it will reflect directly here. You don't need to change anything here in the code. Okay, you just need to make changes or you just need to make add the new uh, new cities or new uh, hotel or new places inside your model class. You just you don't need to do anything in your UI side. Basically, so this is how you can connect with the uh, page. Uh, basically, uh, uh, here inside the uh, UI. Basically, so here is the city list, and the uh, first the index you have there, and first uh, it will iterate the all the whatever you are returning from this uh, uh, list item builder. So you are returning the first index. It will show the first image. It will go and iterate again the second, again the third, and how many elements are there in the list? It will iterate that many times the the loop, and it will show the whole UI uh, inside your grid view. So I hope you understand this concept. Is anyone have any question related to this? Does anyone have any question? Uh, no, ma'am, they don't have any question as of now. Okay, yeah, just a minute. Uh, oh. Ma'am, uh, one participant is asking to explain the padding visit. Okay, yeah, I will explain it. Yeah. Happened. 
I don't have problem with my file or some file is got corrupt or something. Let me open my file again. Just a minute. I think that file is got corrupted or something is wrong with that file. So I will explain the code inside this file only. Is that OK uh, for everyone? So I will explain the code inside this file only. So you can see uh, what I have done uh, up till now. So padding widget will give the padding to the uh, to, to your object. Basically, if I given the padding to the all side, then you can mention as all. If you want to give the padding on the particular side, then there is a property called the only. And you can just mention that uh, size uh, from which side you want have a padding basically. So you can say top left anything you can say uh, here. So if I want if I add something a text or anything you can get a padding for that as well. Let me show you that basically that will more sense. So here after this image you can see this image inside here. So OK, so here is the image uh, which you are, you, are, you are seeing here. So now after the image of, uh, in that stack, I want to add the text uh, as well. So what I will do, I will create a container. Uh, let's say container uh, with some let's say 40 uh, height. height let's say 40 width whatever width we have mentioned in our uh, the container before we have created a, like a 200 let's say 200 width and then let's say uh, child as a widget and it's like a text and inside text as well I what I will do I will have the city index then city name ok and you just see what is happening here I say so much technical glitch today. Are we running off the time basically? Uh, are we in? Do I have time? Yeah, sure, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So uh, give me the color. I will give the color as well uh, to this. So color slot blue. OK, so you can see here uh, in the code. You can see here the code, but my design. I want uh, this. This box should be at the bottom. OK, I will show you how to do this. So now you can see that my text is going on the uh, corner. So I want it should be like a center or I, I want it should be like a little bit further. So you can wrap this text widget with the padding as well. Uh, and you can mention the padding uh, basically like a eight from all side and it will show you the change. So it will take the eight uh, pixel on the top left uh, bottom and right. So you can manipulate that. But I want right now it's on the center. So what I will do I will wrap this widget with the center property. So uh, center widget, so it will it will show you at the center. Now I want this whole blue color box at the bottom. So how we can manage that? So there is a one more uh, one more widget called the align. So if I go and use this align widget. Inside align widget have a property called alignment and alignment. Uh, dot. You can see bottom center center top right. So you can play with this. Uh, I want uh, like a uh, uh, 
bottom center. OK, so I will do this and let's see the changes. So you can see the the, the whole container will move at the bottom center. OK, now in my picture I have given uh, like a transparent effect. How we can do this? So you you have given the blue color, right? We have given the blue color to the uh, uh, container basically. So you can see here, right? So the next thing what I will to do, I will I have the property. You can see uh, with opacity. So in the with opacity, what you can give like a let's say 0 0.6. So it will give the opacity of that container that much. OK, it's too much, right? Let's say 8. Uh, OK, so this is how you can do this. So let me copy. Uh, let's say style. We can style this text. Text style. And here, what we can do? Uh, let's say font weight. Font weight dot bold. And then we'll have add the what I can add also font size. It's a 20. And after that we will have uh, let's say color. Colors dot white. OK. So so you can see how we can create it this. So the next next uh, main part is that uh, uh, now I want to navigate because I have I have created the first part. I have created fetch the data from the model class. Now I want to navigate when I click on this image, it will show me the respective pages. Otherwise, what will happen if I'm not creating a model class? I have to create four different pages with the same kind of uh, structure for London, Paris, New York, Goa for for everything. I have to create a separate pages, but we have created a model class. That's why we have just created only one page and the data will change automatically. So that dynamic things will happen here now. So for that, let me create a one page. I have already created a detail page, but I will show you how to do this basically. So let me create the something. I will create a different page. Uh, let's say. Uh, tell page. Demo. I'm just putting some some different uh, random name. So import. So I'm going to use the material library. I'm going to use the stateful widget here. Uh, let me have like a. So I will say detail. OK, and here I'm going to use scaffold. And here in the scaffold, let's have app bar, app bar. Okay. Text and let's say detail page. Right now I'm just writing the detail page. Okay. So now how we can navigate from this page to that page. So that is first thing we can uh, we can uh, write the code for that. So uh, for to navigation, uh, there is a uh, we can wrap the whole widget like a whole container of this. So where is that container? The return property, the padding. So you can wrap the padding or you can wrap the container as well with the widget called the inkwell. So I will call. OK, so you can uh, use the inkwell widget or you can use the gesture detector. So there are two these widgets you can use to help to navigate the things. So I'm using the inkwell on this inkwell. I have the property uh, is as on tap and in that on tap property you will have the link of the pages. So for that I am going to use the navigator uh, navigator dot push. So what it will uh, how it works. So you can see there is a navigator dot push and there is a navigator dot pop. So if you want 
it will have the stack of the element inside the uh, that navigation so when you use the navigator dot push you are inserting your navigation your uh, uh, navigation history or navigation inside that stack so you are sending from one page to another page if you coming back so it will remove the the name of the page or name of that link from that stack and it take it out and you can go back from where you came so that's how this navigator dot push and navigator dot pop method works basically so here it will need the context so why need the context but because from which page you are going to the next page that's why it needs a context and it will have the material page route okay so which will also have the again builder property and here uh, because i just want to give the context so there is a one uh, and i will give the fat arrow so fat arrow is nothing but you can see it is called as a fat arrow but what is nothing but it is the same declaration if you have just uh, only one line code inside your function you can use the fat arrow otherwise you can create a proper uh, kind of uh, this kind of thing uh, the whole function but I, right now i am just uh, have the only one line code that's why i am going to use the fat arrow here and i will navigate the class name which is my another class name so here you can see what is the class name is detail okay so here i am going to give this uh, the path of the and i have to import that okay so if i click if i run this project it will run me what happened uh, okay so if i click on this page you can see that i will navigate from this page to that page right but i don't want this effect right i want the respective pages i don't want like a one uh, hard coded page which will create it and i'm just linking to that page so if you want to give the navy uh, if you can, if you want to navigate from one page to another page you can use this but now i want to have the respective pages so what i will do i will send the whatever index of my that image or that container i will send through send it from one page to another page so what i will do how you can send it it is so here this sheet is index right so i'm passing this value from one page to another page so i'm sending this so because i'm sending this i need to receive something some somewhere right so it will receive that inside this page okay so this is how you can uh, send data from one page to another page right so in this page i have sent it this data and you can you can write like this i will show you final the type of the class is city and i am finding the city okay and in detail it's already there i don't want this so now if i do like that and i want to show the text from that class what i will do so i am using here a stateful widget okay so it will create a new widget all the time when you use the stateful widget so what is the how you can fetch that value it start with the widget dot ct because i have given the variable name ct dot name okay 
And if I do like this. Uh, what happened? It will show me. OK, because I have create a. OK, because I use the name parameter, so I have to like a uh, name constructor, so it will name. If I click here, you can see. Whatever thing I am clicking, it will create the page like that only. So understand this concept how to pass the data from one page to another page. Because I just need to say the, the this whole class and with the index particular whatever index I am clicking on. I just need to send from the to the next page. That's why I'm sending the cities index only. If I just want to send only name, then you can send the whole just like a name name thing. But I want to send the whole class from the next page. That's why I'm sending the index, so it will take the whole class with me and uh, it, you can access the whole uh, class uh, in the next page as well. So now I want to show the image. I want to show the uh, the text. I want to show the all other parts related to the particular index of where, where, on which I am clicking on. So do you understand this concept? It is very useful because this this uh, if you learn how to create this app, you can create any app as many as so you can go on dribble and you can see any design and you can create any app paid shop app, shopping app, anything. So all the logic behind that is the same. If you have any question related to this, just ask me. Otherwise, I will go through the next day. Understand some participants everyone are asking like, is there any source code or repo available uh, from which they can? Yeah, yeah, I will, I will send and so on implementation. Okay, yeah, please. yeah, I will give the the GitHub repo for this as well. Okay. Uh, hmm. So understand why how I'm sending the data from one page to another page, how I am giving the navigation from one page to another page. So it's the same logic. If you want to click on the same page, go to the third page. You have to send the data from that page to another page. You have to follow the same instruction and you can create a multiple page app basically. So this is the thing. Now I want to fetch the data in that detail page. OK, so uh, what what we can do? Uh, I have just detail here, right? So what I will do, I will just go here uh, after the app bar. I will have a body uh, in that I will have the column. OK, in the column I will have children. And in that uh, I first thing I want the image. Now I want to fetch the particular image because I, if I click on the London, I need the London image on that page. So in the same way, I will do the widget. You can see you can access the whole class from here, the city class. So I will have the city image. And you can see. If I click the Paris, it will show the Paris. Uh, if I OK, the, the image is different, so I don't want that kind of thing again so that some pages will have the small image. Some will have though so I will just give the height and width. So it will work like that. Let's say height is 300 and width. Uh, let's say 420 or something you can check. So maybe next time sometime uh, you, if you want like a, it will adapt with all the designs. So you need to understand the media query and you can do the responsive thing. But that is I'm not going to uh, include in this uh, session, but it's a different topic. So. You can do that means you can create any design with uh, it will adapt the size of the uh, size of your device. Uh, and it will change according to this. So. OK, so now if you go back. It will have the same images with the same size. OK, the next thing is if you can see in my design. Uh, 
so i want i want all the attractions here so let's create that so after this image what i will do i will have like a text uh let me add some size box maybe style as well so okay now i don't want this attractions at the center i want it in the left hand side how you can manipulate as a in the column widget will have the property of alignment let's say uh, it's a cross axis alignment so cross and start so you can see it will go here i i need some uh, some spacing uh, here so how we can do this so what i will do i will just wrap this text widget in and i will just wrap with the padding so it's very handy it will have the padding okay so this is done the next part is that i want list of the element which is the which will scroll horizontally how we can do this so again as i mentioned it's a dynamic thing so what we can do i will create one container here okay i will give some height to that so i will i will tell you the one some tips whenever i create any ui i will give the container to the color so i will understand how much uh, space that is occupied once you are happy with your design then you can remove any time you have the color of the background color of that container but it will always handy to um, uh, the make your ui very perfect pixel perfect basically so let's say i will have like a 100 and uh, width you can don't need to give the width so let's say color so let's say blue color okay let's see okay so this much portion i want i want to put all the things inside this container so now the child of this container which will uh, which is having a list view builder again because we have created a nested class in model class as well so in the list view builder again similar to the uh, grid view it will have the atom count so if you see our class there is a this is a our main class city inside that we have city place as a list of the places okay and it will have the place uh, uh, place name place image description all this stuff so i want to retrieve the now city places uh, list so how we can do this so widget first thing dot city dot you can see city uh, uh, city places and if you can click the length so now you are atom count and you are now accessing you are now accessing the uh, nested class inside the city class okay now you are accessing the place class not the city class so uh, for that again i will do the context index editor so for sake of just uh, write down the code little bit shorter way what i will do i will just make sure i will create one variable and give the value of that variable let's say plus equal to or place data 
equal to okay so it will be more easy for me to now what you want you want container i just want a, a, a column first and inside that column i want the image and i want some text okay so i will take a image dot network and now i want to fetch the image through the model class so uh, uh, what we have written the variable name is place data dot place data index dot see place name place image you can access the whole data So if I go here, so you can see it is now scrolling up and vertically, right? I don't want that. I want horizontally scrolling. So list view will have property of scrolling, scroll direction. So access horizontally so you can see now you can access horizontally okay so because my image size is bigger that's why what i have to do again i have to give the height and weight to the image okay let's say my height is 100 width is let's say uh, 150 and fit box fit okay so you can see all the images here right i need some padding the whole con column what i will do i will just wrap the whole column with the padding okay now you can see the white color the, the blue color because you can see the how you are placing that value of that basically and you can see the error bottom overflow by 60 pixel because what happened when you give the padding it will give the spacing along around the, the that image and we have given the container height is 100 so let's say i have given the container height let's say 130 so it will remove that error as well see there is no error so this is how you can understand how is the placing the proper uh, widget inside some other widget. So now the next step is that I want this image should be like a, a round corner. So if you want to uh, round corner the image, then you can wrap this widget with the clip rect. So clip R rect. So which will give me the uh, property of okay so which will give me the property of uh, border mm. what happened what happened Ben, uh, Avaj is asking the user box fit widget. Uh, box fit widget, yeah. Box fit widget means so whatever uh, the, the fit is a property of the uh, of the image and box fit dot cover means whatever height and width you have given to that uh, image, it will fit in that box only. So it will uh, whatever size uh, you have mentioned. It will fit that image in that particular box. It will create like a box kind of that thing and just it will fit that image in that. So whenever you give the height and width, so it will uh, create that dimension in there and it will fit whatever size of your image. It will fit inside that. It will squeeze that image into that size basically. What happened? Click 
so here is a border radius property why it's not showing me right now i don't know so strange so i will just take it from here only Okay. Okay, so if you can see here. So you can see that it is a uh, it is a round shape image now. Okay, if you want a little bit less, you can give the round so it will like a less uh, rounded. So it's on you how you want, but this is how you can do. Now I don't want this blue color. What I will do, I will just uh, see. Let's say I will have 120 here because there is so much space. Okay, and I will do. I will remove this blue color. So it is look like this. See. So this is how you can create this. So now I want what I want. I want one more list. Basically, if you go here uh, in design, here is a list of hotels. So I want that. How you can create that? You can do the same way how you have created this uh, list view builder. Here you have given the container, but now you don't know how many atoms are there. You cannot give the height to that container. So I've just tried to use the direct list view uh, dot builder. Okay, and here now I have to give the uh, atom count. Now again, I have to use the widget dot city dot. Now I want city list, uh, sorry, hotel list. So I'm going to use the hotel list dot length. So now in this list we builder, we are just fetching the list of hotels related to that class basically. So here I'm going to use in a context, comma indexed. And I will just, I will return. So this time what I want, uh, this time I want a, like a one container and inside that I want a row. So let's say container and then I want to have child as a row. Okay, and inside or you can directly use the row as well. It doesn't matter means if you are just directly uh, using the row widget as well, it doesn't have any problem. So if you are using the row inside that, children and inside that I want a container or image. So image dot network. So now I will again do the short uh, code. Uh, just use the city hotel that much here. I will create one variable like uh, let's say where Oh, hotel data. Okay, and here we are using hotel data dot im index. Sorry. Dot hotel. Let's say hotel image. Okay. Okay, uh, again, you have to give the height and width. Let's say 50 height and width. Let's say um, how much? Let's say 80 or 100 maybe. Again, fit. Uh, 
So. Again, we can see the so the the list view because we haven't put the shrink wrap here, right? If you wrap the widget with the container, you don't need because it will give you the you already mentioned that OK, this container will this much height, but here you don't mention anything. So you have to give the shrink wrap. What will happen? How many elements are there in that list? It will shrink to that many uh, that much portion only. So uh, here I will say true. OK, and then let's see. So see you can see the images. If I wrap this row uh, with the let's say container and then. I will wrap this with the. Padding. So now again you uh, now you know that what how you can solve this issue, right? So you just need to go to the column and wrap this column with the single child school. See. Now again, I don't want just scroll this much. I just want to scroll the whole page. So how you are going to do this? You are going to have in this hotel list and just go here and say physics and no scrollable physics. Never scrollable physics. OK, so. So now you can see you can scroll the whole page. So now you can you can design it like a, let's say now what I have given I have given like a 50. Let's say 80 of this. A uh, little bit bigger size of the image. OK, and then because right now you can see the same data because I have just for the sample. I have used the only one image and one data in my model class. If I change that data, it will change here as well. So. I want to just demonstrate how you can fetch the data. So let's say text. Uh, let's say have a uh, text here. OK. OK, I will have one container here basically. First, let me have container. Or we can have a column as well, maybe. So I can put the text up and down. So here in the children and I will have the text. And here is the name of the hotel. So how you can fetch it? You can just similar way you can fetch the data. Instead of hotel name or image, you can have the hotel name. OK, so you can see that hotel name will come here. OK, so if you want, you can give the spacing here as well. Or you can wrap this column with the padding widget or you can just give the size box. With the width of. Let's say. OK, so now the next thing what I want, I want uh, again text widget with the description or address. OK, so. Now again, you can see this problem is coming because the text is bigger. What happened uh, if I this text is that, that bigger than the size of the box, it should come down, but it is not happening right now. So what you can do wrap this column with the expanded widget. OK. And then see so what it will happen. So how much space uh, remaining after the uh, in this row? How much space remaining after this image? It will take the whole image space, uh, the, the space of that container row, and 
it will put uh, the text inside that and if the text is bigger it will automatically shift that text in the next line so this is very handy it will always work with the uh, expanded widget always work with the rows or column so it's very handy so you can use this uh, if after this if i want to have some buttons or something so i can use the container and in this container i will have let's say height and width something height let's say 40 width let's say 80 and color okay and have a child as a text and we'll have the price or something here okay just have a look so now again you have you can see the hilton is going here and it is like a center so you can you can just do the uh, cross axis alignment again at the start okay and i want this uh, text should be at the center so i will do the wrap with the set so i'm not going in the very detail of the the designing but you can design as how you want but this is how you can create the design of the uh, page and you can create and face the value so next thing is just remaining is the animation so how you can do that transition so uh, that is there is a widget called the hero animation hero widget so what we will do uh, we will go on the uh, home page so what is a, a criteria to use this is you have like a same id means which image you want to transit from one place to another place you just need to have the same id related to that so let me show you if i just want to have the image which you, i want to do the image transition i will wrap that uh, image with the hero widget okay and this widget have one uh, uh one necessary tag is tag and what is the unique unique name for this so i think the unique name is the name of the city right so it will not repeat so what i will do i will just give the city name index and sit uh, as a tag name you can name it anything but it is dynamically coming that's why i thought giving the city name Okay, and I will give the same city name on the next page as well, where I want to show that. So what I will do here again, where is I'm image using? I will wrap that as well uh, with the hero widget. Okay, and here as well, I'm going to have the tag. But here, what you have to do, you have to use widget. So we have already there, right? We check. Uh, so here is hotel data. We don't need that. Like we want the widget dot city. Where I have given this city. Yes, this one. Oh, I have. I'm putting in uh, wrong place actually. Let me do that. So sorry. <laughs> I have to give one at the top image, not the bottom one. Okay. And now you can see. So you can see there is a there is a transition going on, right? P 
before what it, it is not working like this but you can see some transition it is going somewhere and it will open the thing so this is how you can create the ui with some simple simple widgets and uh, using the model class you can create a dynamic ui you can create any any ui with this same code you just change the name you change the model you can change the images and you can create a, like a shopping app a pets app or anything whatever you like so this is like a one basic thing you can do with this basically i hope you all understand if you have any question let me know uh, and i hope uh, i have shared something with you that will you will help to understand flutter more so is anyone have any question related to this what i will do i will just uh, put this uh, on my github repository you can take it from i can send you the link as well Uh, Ma'am, meanwhile there are few questions in the chat box. Uh, yeah. Uh, like Avesh is asking, uh, please, uh, is asking to explain the hero animation once again. Okay. Okay. I will do that. So I will just send the link on the chat box of this. So you will have the link of the code basically. Uh, I think for that. Uh, I will just. So I have put it the link GitHub link for uh, the code for this today's uh, uh, application. Okay. So for the hero animation. Okay. So what is happening? Uh, if you want to transit one image to another image. Okay. So you just need to. It's not only for the image. you can you can create as many things you want to transit from one player one a container to the another container maybe let me show you that uh, maybe because we are fetching from the dynamically that's why maybe you can confuse it maybe i will uh, i will show you some uh, different way as well so let's say uh, before this image what i will do uh, in home page i will create something So let's say container. Okay. Okay, and in this container, uh, okay, this will go down actually. I will put at the bottom maybe. Okay. Okay, and I will give some height and width. Let's say twenty. Width is two hundred, and I will give the color. let's say red okay or pink okay so this is the uh, color uh, this is the container i have created now i will create the same kind of container inside my detail page as well okay so here in the uh, before this image i will create a one container and let's say i will have 400 width and i will have let's say uh, 300 height okay so let will have and then we will wrap with this widget with the hero animation so this is the image and you can see this is the uh, pink let me have more or uh, height maybe for this 60 okay 
So whenever I click on this uh, pink color, it will have that kind of effect. So how you can do this? You just need to wrap that widget. So I am wrapping this container. OK. So I am wrapping this widget with the hero. OK, hero widget. Again, for the transition, you have to mention which image you want to or which container you want to transit from this container to the some other container. So I will go here and I will also wrap this container with the uh, hero animation, uh, hero widget. And what I will do tag, let's say tag name is, let's say uh, tag name is like a, my, uh, if I'm saying like a Reno, okay. So if I use the same tag name here, uh, it should have an identical like a it's a, it's it have the unique ID like a unique kind of uh, name or tag anything you want it's you it should be unique basically. So uh, if I given this. What happened? Okay. So So this is how you can just create this basically. It's not like key uh I think it is not taking like this. I think it's just like this. No, it's not because I already put it one hero widget, but it will it is like that only it works basically hero widgets. So do you understand what uh, basically how we can develop this? You just need the unique identical uh, identical value. So that's why what I have given here. I have given the name because my city name is unique. Now I can show you the problem if I add the same uh, uh, if I don't have a just a minute. Okay, now if I add more uh, more data inside my uh, let's say here is my city class, right? Here is the unique name is London. If I copy this class, okay? And I will paste it again. OK, if I paste it in the last place. So now my London name is not unique. OK, it is repeating, so it will not work. I will show you. It will not work that effect. Uh, I have to run because I have made changes in the model class. You have to run the project again. If you made changes in your PubSpec or YAML file, if you made changes in your uh, the model class, just reload that project again. So it works on the the hero animation only works on the unique name tag for the both the places. See, it will not work. It is not work and you can see uh, it will show the the multiple heroes that share the same tag within the subtree. So this is the problem, right? If I remove that, it will solve my issue again. Now it will work. See? So how you can do this? This is very simple. So it is very simple animation. That's why I thought I can introduce you this animation. So this transition uh, animation is a completely separate uh, separate topic uh, for the uh, for to understand. So is anyone have any other question? 
Uh, yeah, ma'am, few folks have, so I'm letting them unmute. Uh, okay, okay, so they'll ask while. Well. Okay, so let I'm unmuting me one. stop sharing. Yeah, okay, let me stop sharing my yeah. screen so I can see who is asking. Uh, okay, so Tushar, can uh, you can ask your doubt now. Tushar Upadhyay. Hello. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Uh, what are the ma'am basics to build an app? So basics means that you need to understand the UI, how you can create the UI. Second thing, you need to understand if it is a multi-page app, you need to understand how to create a model. And that's it. You can show the app like a, it's a. Uh, you can. You are not. You cannot say like that. It is a full app. It is like a UI. Okay. If you want to have the full functionality app, you need some data so you can create uh, some Firebase data or API to fetch that values. So let's say you are creating a blog app, so you can create the same way. You can add, remove, add some blocks, add some images kind of thing, but it will save the data inside only in your model class. So don't want that. So you can connect to the Firebase. You can add the data through your app inside your Firebase. You can remove the data through your app in from the app Firebase. So that's how you can create the simple app, the whole app, when using the uh, Firebase and the uh, Flutter UI. But you just need to understand the UI first, the structure of the app, how to navigate it, how to understand how to implement the Firebase in that. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Abhishek Salve, you can uh, ask your query. Uh, Abhishek Salve, can you hear me? You can ask your query now. I think he's not there. Okay, he might be having some issue. Uh, Avez Kazi, you can ask your query now. Okay, so how do I know where and which widget do I wrap and add the widget? Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, it's it. You will understand all this stuff uh, when you do practice it. Okay. So now you can see. I don't need to go to the documentation and see which widget I'm going to wrap with. If I want to, if I uh, if I want to have like I have created a container. I after that I thought okay I I need some text below that. So I will wrap that container with the column, and then I can add the text widget. OK, then after that I fall that. Oh, OK, my text should be at the center. OK, go and wrap that widget with the center widget. So this is how you can learn. But for that you should understand the what widget works. Uh, uh, what is the use of that widget? Basically, if you know the what is the size box, then you OK. Whenever you need some spacing, you directly use that. If you want some padding, Understand the padding, go through the documentation or go to the tutorials and just understand what is how you can manipulate the padding. So once you learn it, then you can use it. The what is the use of that inside your app basically. But eventually when you do the practice, then and then you will understand more and more the structure, how to create a UI inside the flutter and you will understand what should I wrap with what we check basically. Okay, ma'am, are you uh, running out of time? Like, uh, do you have any uh, some more time to ask? Uh, yeah, you can ask. Yeah, uh, I have I have ten minutes. No worries. Okay, okay. So, okay, so Ravi Ranjan, you can ask your doubt. Thank you, sir. Good good evening, ma'am. Ma'am, I want to ask you. Yeah. Stack and how feedbox work. Sorry, sorry. Which? Uh, how stack and feedbox working? 
I can hear the stack, but what is the next widget you are asking? Fit, fit, box, fit. Use करते हैं. Fit, box, fit. Oh, fit, box. So, so stack is the uh, widget where you want to overlap something to each other. Okay. So, because if you have a container, you will have a child, right? And whatever text or whatever thing you calling inside that container, it will always in that container only. It will not overlap with each other. so if i want something some design so you can see here the design so here you can see the uh, the uh, text okay these two text i want to uh, put it on the top of the image let me uh, let me show you uh, if i because you can use the you you if you can have the same effect you can use as a child of that image as well but it will not work like that so what i have used i have used the stack so if i use the let's say uh, in this page uh, where is that home page uh, i will add something uh, here on the stack image if i add let's say okay uh container stack hero widget okay on the top okay so here you can see this image and after that i have put it this padding and i have put it the text right if i put if i put some uh, container here so sometimes you need kind of the uh, designs like this right where you want to overlap uh, the things uh, that time you can use the uh, basically stack widget so see you can see the it is uh, on the top of this if you give the padding so uh, some designs if you give the some padding to this uh, so it is going back right so now let's say i want some design where this width letter is having some background how we can do this let's say let's say 120 okay let's say 100 i want little bit on the left side as well uh, uh, left as left let's say 20 okay now i want that behind the text what i will do it is overlapping right now right so i will copy this i will remove this and i will where is that uh, text with okay before that i will just put it so see how you can manipulate this thing you can decide what which overlap with which widget basically so overlapping things will happen only you can use the stack widget and for for the fit you can use the fit as a property for the image and you can like a box fit is a widget where you can fit that image in that particular dimension whatever dimension you have given that image it will fit with that basically so there are the many property of that as well so if you can see uh, here i have used the image uh, and you have given the uh, let me show you that again so here is the image right you having the property of what happened is a comma here is a fit property and let's say box fit okay so let's say box fit like a uh, fit with the height okay 
So what it will do? I will give the height as well. Let's say. OK, so it will fit. Uh, why it is not coming? OK, it will keep. See, it will it will fit that image with that much height only. Because I have put it like a box fit with fit height. If I, uh, cont I will put like a content, it will have the different kind of effect. See, so the height is there, but how much uh, the uh, content I can put it. So these are the different different property with the fit box. So you can try and play with that whatever effect you want and you can use that basically. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So for to learning all this stuff, basically, uh, if you want to learn UI, I think Raja Yogan's video, video tutorials are really best to create a different kinds of UI. So follow him, play with, uh, do like a uh, practice with their tutorial, basically. So first you can master in the UI, then go through the, uh, the then go to the Firebase. First, understand, uh, create like a four or five project with this, uh, creating a model class, creating the UI with the different different style. You can try it that and then once you are very much comfortable with this, then go to the Firebase, then do some three, four project with the Firebase as well. Then shift to API. So like that, every stack have the different different uh, user cases. Try that and go to the next level basically. That's how you can learn basically. Does anyone have any question? I hope you all understand what I have taught you uh, today and last last session as well. It helped you to start learning your Flutter journey and you have started creating your project as well. Uh, if anyone have any question, please do ask. Else, uh, we'll be wrapping up the session soon. So, how many of you have already installed the Flutter and started creating your first UI with Flutter? Good. That's good. I can see people are saying me. OK. So welcome to the flutter then. So uh, you can contact me anytime on Twitter if you have any questions or queries. I have I think last time I've shared my discord link as well. If you have anything there as well, but. Stuck if you stuck somewhere. You can anytime ask me questions over the social media as well. But do do start your project, do practicing it. Uh, you want my Twitter link and all this stuff, uh, then I will share my screen maybe. Here is the details of uh, my Twitter handle. So you can uh, you can follow the my Twitter handle or you can follow my community Take Power Girls. Uh, we do take normally take a workshop uh, once a month or something. Uh, we will help you or maybe you all want to learn more. Then we will maybe uh, we will do something again collaboration with all your GDs. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Is there any internship for learning? 
Uh, right now we have we are not doing, but if we get a really good amount of students, then we will definitely do because we have some tie up with the company. So we'll do that. Uh, we have done uh, before that as well uh, for some uh, women and students. Uh, if we got some good amount of students with us, then we definitely do. So we will we will because normally what we do, we call the uh, we do we run the workshops and we call the companies as well and they will see your work. So basic basic thing is that you should create your portfolio and how you can create the portfolio. You have to practice it and whatever you practice it, just put it on the social media that OK, I am doing this today. OK, social media nowadays social media uh, really helps you to create your portfolio and uh, to run the things basically. Just a minute. I'm just uh, give me one second only. Uh, someone is at my door. Just to give me some second. Uh, I guess you will get to know about like who will be the taking who will be taking the next session. Okay. You will get to know through your respective GDSC. So oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not an issue. So if you don't have any question then but but do learn, do do practice that is what I am I will say. No one have any question. Yeah, so I guess uh, we should wrap up the session. Okay. okay. So I really I would like to thank you all your uh, for GD uh, C and thank you for inviting me for this both sessions. It was a really good experience for me to interact with the student. I'm always happy to collaborate with the student. So if you have in the future something like this, uh, I would like to definitely connect. Sure, ma'am. It's our pleasure to have you on board here. Oh, that's thank you. So Thank thanks so a lot uh, Renuka ma'am for giving your valuable time uh, despite of your busy schedule and guiding our participants throughout the session. Uh, we are really thankful for that. Also, uh, thanks thanks, uh, thanks a lot all the participants for attending the session. I hope you had great time, great learning throughout the session. Also, I would like to thank all the organizing team for a smooth conduction of the event. And uh, this session was organized under Flutter Festivals by Avantika University in the Institute of Science and Technology, Punima College of Engineering, and Amity University, Mumbai, in collaboration. So, thanks to all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, see you there. Bye. Bye. Bye.